सब्सक्राइब नाउ एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन नेवर मिस एन अपडेट नमस्ते कोनिचुआ वेलकम टू द नूपुर तिवारी शो शक्ति वुमेन हु फॉट ऑड्स एंड टुडे टू वी हैव अनदर इनक्रेडिबल वुमेन एंड सी इज नॉन अदर देन राधा ओल्गा डि सिल्वा एंड सी इज एन ऑथर अवार्ड विनिंग एंटरप्रेन्योर एंड एलजीबीटी एक्टिविस्ट राधा वेलकम टू द नूपुर तिवारी शो थैंक यू नूपुर तिवारी एंड थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग मी ऑन योर शक्ति शो साउंड्स फैंटास्टिक Yeah, definitely. So we all are, right? We all are empowered women. So it is actually this is the this is dedicated to all of us, right? Absolutely. So we would love to know, like, you know, when I see your post and everything, I I just see that you found yourself, right? So we'd love to know how did this happen? Like, how was the process? Uh, interesting i think we are work in progress mm-hmm. at all times we mm-hmm. are continuously looking for something within us and i don't know about you for me i think right from since i was a child mm-hmm. i kept on looking for me you mm-hmm. know i don't think that i am yet i haven't yet found myself nupur i think oh. i'm a work in progress okay i find i find bits of me sometimes mm-hmm. and i think to myself okay at this point in my life i i came out as an lgbt person as you know which at the age of 50 which was recently so for me at that point this point in my life i found that part of me okay. you know there were certain points in my life i had lost my confidence so i found my confidence back so it's a continuous process and i don't know what else i will found find next so i keep looking i keep digging inside i keep reflecting and i keep thinking i'm sure there are lots of aspects to me that are still to be revealed and i think most of us women are like that Yeah you're right actually because most of us are looking for like what who we are right every day i think it's this constant process so what really helped you raga i think reflection is very important that's the most important thing a lot of us live our life in you know uh, in doubt we mm-hmm. live a version of somebody else's life of us right they mm-hmm. they will tell us you are this person you are that person they will continuously label us So True. when they label us, we start believing that that's who we are, True. and we start living that life mm-hmm. until I don't know. At least for me, this is what happened. Until I started reflecting and thinking, I am not that person actually. I, you know, people call me extroverted, introverted, depending upon who the person is. They will call me flamboyant, or they'll call me uh, gracious, or whatever vivacious, whatever names and labels they gave for me. And I would live that name. I would think, oh, somebody. If I went and met a person who called me, let's say. uh outgoing then when i met that friend i would always be outgoing because i wanted them to see that part of me which they had told me i was yeah But i started thinking who am i really and i realized that the more i was growing older the more i reflected the more i accepted my flaws as well mm-hmm. then i said it's okay i'm actually not that person i'm this person and i'm okay with all my flaws and that person it doesn't matter to me if it doesn't mm-hmm. matter to you it doesn't matter to me whether it you like it or not i will live that life Yeah so you are not going to like we are not go we should not impress other so our lives should not be impressing others it's rather you know having your own life believing in yourself exactly exactly but you know nupur we we do live our lives trying to impress others i'm constantly i found myself doing that all the time until i realized that's not going to work for me because it puts too much of pressure when you're trying to be somebody else's version of you the best True. way to be is yourself and if they don't accept you it's okay we don't need such people in our lives anyway so when when you found out that the lgbt thing how, how was your own reaction how did you react to yourself like see i it's a it's a very deep rooted question it's not mm-hmm. that overnight one day i woke up and i thought to myself oh i'm actually a gay woman a queer woman it is not like that mm-hmm. all through your life you have many instances where you are aware self aware mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. because the kind of society we live in I always say that I I was most homophobic towards my own self because mm-hmm. you know you see that the LGBT community is ridiculed, mocked, abused. There is hate crime. 
so you know you you look at it from the outside sometimes you also participate i've also participated in some aspects of which i'm very sad about it but i have so i was very scared of coming out as that person because i thought the same thing is going to be done to me which happened as well so mm-hmm. 18 years ago when i first accepted this part of me i was actually dragged out of the closet my mother found a letter i had written to my uh, friend and she was so upset with me that she wanted to actually kill me she came physically to kill me with a knife because she said that this shame and scandal i don't want a family to have and you can understand that right because 18 20 years ago and imagine even earlier there was no information when i grew up in india i didn't know the word gay or queer or lesbian or whatever we call it we only knew and i'm sorry i'm using that in the same language lgbt because trans and stands for hijras right and yeah. they were ridiculed and we were boxed into the same community so i was scared that i would be called a hijra i would be called a chakka you know all those names given to the trans people which has to be totally stopped and uh, so that whole self acceptance took me a long time because i was scared of society pressures and it was over time it took me 18 years anupur to slowly now i live this life it's only the last one and a half years i say i do not care anymore if i don't make the change i don't change this narrative with my story then it will never change and you won't be able to forgive yourself also absolutely you right. know the pressure that puts on mental health also because mm-hmm. you're constantly living a lie mm-hmm. you're constantly living a double life which we sure. all do in many ways sure. not just i'm from the lgbt community maybe that's the you know aspect i hid but all of us live a lie and when we live a lie you imagine the darkness we go through the pressures we put on ourselves and that you can't even talk about it depression that people go through there are huge number of suicide cases in the lgbt community because you're afraid for yourself you're afraid how your family will react you're afraid how your friends will react you're afraid to get a job whether you will get a job whether you'll be treated fairly there is so much of pressure on the community so much fear as well right absolutely from right. fear it comes from yeah. fear so 18 years is it was really tough for you to accept yourself also right yes yes and i had little kids at that time my kids were uh, about 4 and 1/2 years old at that time Mm-hmm. so you know constantly the society kept on telling me you can't do this because what will your children go through you selfish woman you know you're thinking only about yourself what about the children you know as you know as an yeah, indian yeah, woman yeah. no matter where we live our society is the same our thinking our attitude our mental understanding of everything is the same right True. so they kept telling me the same thing they said oh do it no don't don't come out because your children will suffer mm-hmm. yeah but you know children only suffer when you put them through unhappy relationships when you don't give them love when you don't show them love that's when they suffer otherwise they are the most flexible aren't they children yeah they are exactly so how it happened with you like your ch- children how did they react well they were only 4 years old when you bring them up in a, a family which is absolutely not biased no judgment no prejudices they grow up into beautiful human beings so their reaction is what when i talk about coming out they say what why like why do you need to come out this is who we are this is your life and and they encouraged me actually to publicly go out and say that you know you should if you can change one story one person's life mm-hmm. through your narrative through your story then i think we should do it and that's my the encouragement of my ex husband my children and my partner you know wow so your ex husband also he helped you yeah he's he's an ally yeah in this journey but you know that journey hasn't happened overnight either in the pool you know true. people tell me that oh how wonderful you have a fairy tale life even your ex husband is your ally right <laughs> and people don't realize it's been 18 years 18 true. years is a long time yes it is years, think about 18 years is to, how many 12 months times 18 or to look at it on a weekly basis or a true. daily basis a lot of moments that you have to slowly chip away and say it's okay it's okay there'll be drama there'll be conflict there'll be name calling but yeah. you remember that you have a relationship you have history together and you make it work and finally it's created into this beautiful you know extended family for us so this is this is actually now i think your courage it worked most important thing i think uh, the in this process i think because the courage you got from yourself like yeah this is the i have to do and i have to reveal myself like who i am really i think courage you got and that Uh, courage actually brought everyone together and they helped you 
I, I people say that word a lot to me that they say I'm courageous, I'm brave. I don't know about that. Maybe I don't see it from that point of view. Mm. To me, mm. I think that I believe in relationships, Nafur. I believe in investing in yourself and mm. investing in people that you care for and who care about you. Mm -hmm. So to me, it is not about courage. It's in the belief that everything will be all right if you invest enough in it. You have mm -hmm. to hold people's hand and tell them that it's okay because we all come from fear, right? Sure, so sure. I, I held yeah. many people's hand along the journey as they held my hand as well. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes they didn't hold my hand and I would still go and hold their hand saying, it's okay, I know you don't understand. But let's create a world of love together. And I really believe in it because that's all it is, no? Haven't you seen enough dysfunctional families where the partner is abusive and they still work, they still live together, they still want to be together because of society? Mm -hmm. We don't live that fake life anyway, you know, anymore. Yeah. So now you're in New Zealand, right? So no, I'm in London. That? I'm in London. Oh, you're in London. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. But you were in New Zealand before. It's been 10 okay. years. My partner so, is from New Zealand. Yeah. So it was, it was like how. Um, so London, India, New Zealand, the societies, I think, a bit different. So when did you feel that uh, in London, how things happened with you, like uh, the reaction and everything? Because it's, so, it's a more flexible, cosmopolitan, many countries, people are there. Yeah. No, I think all three countries are cosmopolitan. All three are melting pots. You have people from all around the world in all three countries. Yeah. I don't true. think it is any different. People okay. are the same, whether, you know, as you live in Japan, in India, the UK, the, what, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. Our community especially is the same. They haven't really, they take India everywhere they go, right? Sure. We take India everywhere we go. So nothing is really different. What is different is the laws that the country puts forward. So if there are anti-discriminatory laws or there, mm -hmm. are, there is pressure on people not to react in a negative manner, mm -hmm. then people yeah. don't, they're scared. So if mm -hmm. in the UK or in New Zealand, nobody can actually pass a slur comment towards me if I want it, I could go to the cops. I get protection from the cops because it is against law. It doesn't mean that people don't do it. It doesn't mean that when I'm walking on the high road, some guy the other day on, on a busy street in uh, 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 London Street, Nicola and I, my partner and I were walking and this guy was just standing outside McDonald's eating his crap McDonald's food. Sorry to say that. And just he just screamed out uh, loudly, said, lesbians! You should go shove yourself, something like that. And I'm saying, like, I'm not eating his McDonald food. I'm not picking up his food. So what is his problem? You know, but they do that. Now, I can't, don't have time or energy to go to the cop. But people are not any different anywhere in the world. They get scared of power. They get scared of laws. And therefore, laws are very important. Okay. So these are still happening. It's very sad to hear that these, these things are happening still. And people are actually, they, they don't have confidence enough, you know, to face you or the accept that you can be happy. So I think that is the thing. It's coming from there. They're insecure. They're people, that is one reason, but it also could be just think about us as growing up, right? In our mm -hmm. own families, mm -hmm. in our own family, it starts in our own families. You know, first of all, we're not even aware of the word LGBT. Let's mm -hmm. say we're not aware. And then if we are aware, then there is so much of information around us, which is misinformation. The television will show you, uh, you know, series or the films will show you things and they ridicule the community. They, they, mm -hmm. You know, a feminine man will be called Chakka and whatever. A mm -hmm. lesbian will be called some names again. So we are growing up around that. So, so it becomes difficult for a person from the community to actually come out and live their truth because you know your parents or your siblings may have similar views mm -hmm. so it starts at home mm -hmm. then you go to a workplace you know and again our religious belief systems and you go to a workplace in workplaces also some places will have these sensitizations and some places will just not care about it so you're constantly uh, aware that there is homophobia around so people, all of us, and we're all the same. We talk about anything about diversity, disability you talk about. Unless we understand disability, we, it's an individual attitude, right? How we treat that person. True. So it is across the spectrum. Women, women, uh, women again, like us, we're minority, powerful women. We are mm. not treated equally across the board. It all mm. depends upon how our home treats us, how our workplace treats us, what is the educational environment that we've grown up around. Mm -hmm. You know, they all play a role. And until all of them merge and come together, we will have a very dysfunctional, exclusive society. Exactly. Now, just you said that uh, you had the belief system that uh, believe in love and let's spread love. So did spirituality help you anyway? 
see, I, I don't, uh, I live a very spiritual life anyway, because mm-hmm. I feel that inside. You know, what is spirituality? It's your own, where you're not looking True. at religion as a support, you're looking at your own reflections and you're lis- listening to the teachings of other people who mm-hmm. have had a powerful spiritual life. So I think, I, I only say that what helps me is reflection. And wherever that reflection takes me, it takes me very, very, very deep inside. And I can tell you there are days I don't want to get out of bed because when you reflect and you go deep inside, it can take you to very dark places and you have to be prepared for that. For that to happen, you have to be spiritual because you have to believe that there is a purpose in life and that whatever that purpose is, that you have to live that purpose, no matter how much pain you go through internally. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, uh, indirectly, definitely that is spirituality and that is your believing it uh, because we, uh, we just believe that there is something, universe is working its own unique way, you know, and uh, believing in yourself, I think the best thing we can do because we are See? respecting ourselves. So there are many women, it's not only LGBT and there are many women since this uh, show is for women only. So there are many women who cannot come out you know, uh, taking their problems there, somehow they're just adjusting at home, somehow just uh, they're uh, just to, you know, uh, keep uh, the, you know, their family united or together, whatever reason it can be. So what do you think, why they are doing that? And what would be their, your message for them? Sure, I think it's uh, what we already know is patriarchy. We have been brought up in this whole patriarchal environment, where the man is the head of the family. We've been I don't know whether you watch those movies. I have watched all the Pati Parmeshwar. We've been, <laughs> we have been taught to think that our husbands first, first of all, that you have to marry to have a full life. Then if you marry, then your husband is your God. Then if you, uh, if you don't treat your husband as God, then everything falls apart for you, right? And you're constantly relying on, so the husband gives you permission. He will give you permission to go work. Oh, I allow my wife to work. Or the wife will say, my husband allows me to work. So all these things are are made to form a society. And Mm -hmm. we start believing that. In my case also, I have to say, I felt very guilty. The guilt always stayed with me. If I went out leaving my children with my husband at that time, I would say that, oh, my husband is babysitting today. Now, how dare we say the husband is babysitting? It's his children. Babysitter is someone you pay externally. You pay them and they look after your children. Your your husband doesn't have to look after your children. So women, we are our own problem that we allow this to happen. We will mm-hmm. say things that are actually derogatory for us as women. So that has to change. We have to change that there's nothing wrong. You don't have to feel guilty. You're not being selfish. You're being your own person. If you make decisions for yourself and for your family that are right for you, it doesn't always have to be about the husband. And that is my, my I don't really have a message for anyone, but what I would say the way I live my life, I live on my own terms. And I always think about family because you know when we make choices, there are consequences to those choices. Sure. And I'm always aware that if whatever, I, whatever I'm saying to you today mm-hmm. also has a consequence. I'm always aware of the consequences. So whatever comes out of my mouth, whatever comes out of my being is a choice I make. And I'm willing to face the consequences of that choice, knowing that my intent is really good. My mm-hmm. intent is always good towards my family. I will always keep my family first. Mm-hmm. And the husband also has to buy into that idea. And mm. has to be a partner. That is why they call we are called partners. True. You know, partners is what partnership is. You can yeah, equal. Equal. Yeah, actually. equal. Right. Yeah. Partnership is not a business thing. Or you only have twenty percent partnership. I have eighty percent partnership. There's no shareholding. The shares are equal in a relationship. And exactly. Yeah. So equality is very much important. Actually, you know. So actually, I was raised and because I believe in. Um, I don't know whether you have read or not. Swami Vivekananda, uh, like he's kind of. I follow him, and since the very beginning, he said that one society, the men and women, we have to be the uh, equal. Otherwise, the country or society they cannot be. Uh, you know, real way or developed the country cannot be developed if the men and women are not equal so i think um where we are missing actually why we are there are many men i would say many men actually they uh, support their uh, daughters their sisters they're definitely that's why you know many of us are doing what we are doing but um i think uh, the women also we have to support ourselves we have we are just too much grateful if somebody is letting us do something so yeah, I'd love to know about your opinion very, on that. Very well said. We, you, you also just said it yourself. There are wonderful women, uh, men around. You just yourself said it. And you were actually, you were saying that you were grateful that there are those men who allow us to do things. Otherwise, yeah. we wouldn't be where we are. 
I think that thinking is to change for all of us. Yeah. I think we have to be grateful to each other, whether it is woman, True. mother, father, siblings, friends, that we allow each other to just be who we are, accept each other for who we are, right? Now, for a for a man to change, mm-hmm. because, you know, it is very comfortable for a man, right? Well, yeah. You're given that, you know, you may be nobody in the world, but in your mm-hmm. house, you wear that, that uh, crown, right? True. So why wouldn't you want to be the king in his house and, you know, have power on his wife and his children and his mother and his father? Because it's great to have that power. What we have to learn to do as society, as women, is to keep articulating that we are equal. That mm. See, imagine like, why should I be in the kitchen all the time? Now, there's nothing wrong in that. But mm. why should I have to be seen as the woman will be in the kitchen? Partner, partner, I think that will change and not to feel guilty. Except I think, I think education has to start at home. Mm. And it is okay for a woman to start with herself, True. not with a man. We have True. to start. I, if I don't put a full stop to it, it will never end. Hmm. True. So this is, I think, I think this is totally uh, the our own empowerment. This is this empowerment that, that is nobody can give you from outside. It is it should come from inside. Totally. That I am equal and I am going to treat my raise my children equally. And um, first, definitely, you know, respect, because I think most of us, most of the women, we uh, we don't respect ourselves. We just always think that we are definitely lesser than the men. Yes. Right. Yes. Weaker, weaker, they say. Weaker, the woman is yeah. A, yeah. Like, what does that even mean? True. You know, I mean, look at it. If, if the woman is not in the house, if, if it's a married couple, woman's on the, the man doesn't know what to do. He doesn't even know where the cup of uh, sugar is or, you know, a jar of sugar is, sorry, a cup of coffee is. So it's not weaker. It is, we are stronger, if anything. It's just yeah. that we have not understood the strength within us because over the years, we've been told that we are the weaker sex and we've yeah. been pushed down. We've been pushed down. It's only women like you and I are breaking that mold and grace, breaking that glass ceiling and saying, actually, no, it's not true. I am actually as strong as you are, if not stronger. Hmm. And I respect you and I want you to respect me as well. It's- that, that's a very uh, important value to have respect. You're right. Yeah. It's not, you know, I always ask this question, Rupur, and a lot of people have very interesting answers they come up with. Is love more important or respect more important? I think and, for me, I think respect is more important. Yeah. Me as when well. you start respecting, love comes automatically. Exactly. Imagine you love somebody and you should, don't show them respect. What's the point of that love? Yeah. So exactly. So this is the this is the thing. Actually, we have to convey to women because today's women also who are in their twenties, they are also struggling with the same problem, that uh, they are not happy at their home. They are not happy. They cannot actually express what they want, or uh, because of the society and because of the lot of problems uh, they are having in their lives. Many many, many people are in their li- lives and they don't want to uh, upset them. You know. So uh, for the viewers, I would like to say definitely if you have any questions, definitely uh, Raga is there and uh, you can always ask her uh, the question. I will convey to uh, those questions to her and see, she will be, again, maybe we can make another episode with her and she can answer all those questions, especially for the women. If you have any questions, please do ask her. I'll convey and she will be, um, you know, we'll invite her and she'll be answering those questions. So thank you so much for giving time. And uh, at last, definitely would love to know, um, you know, the last message of yours for the viewers. Yeah, I, I consider myself Nupur as a feminist. And I mm-hmm. believe that, you know, as a feminist, that there are the new generation that you were talking about, the younger girls who are coming out. For them, there are lots of choices, more choices than we ever had because of True. the work that we have done, because of the work my generation, the generation that was preceding me has mm-hmm. done a lot of work in this area. So women today can actually think of going to work. They can actually live independently. They can actually choose to marry who they want. They can actually decide not to marry if they didn't want to marry. There are mm-hmm. so many choices. They can decide how they want to create this beautiful family if they are married, of equality, mm-hmm. how they bring in respect into their lives. We didn't have that choice. We have given this choice to them on a platter. And I really hope that the women of today use those choices really well. Yeah, that is actually a tricky point. And this is most important that the choices you have, but you have to use them well. You have to choose them well, actually. Mm-hmm. And I hope that today's women really, you know, they should do that because they have many choices. Very well said, actually. So with that, thank you so much for coming and giving your time and giving so much information, so much knowledge and so much encouragement, I would say. 
So viewers are delighted to know you and the way you think. And I think um, especially women, they are going to be more themselves from now. Thank you, Nupur. Thank and, and you. Please, please follow me on Totally Out Now uh, on my social handles. And yes, like Nupur said, any questions, happy to answer and live your life powerfully because Shakti is inside us, within us. Remember exactly. That. And it is the empowerment. We all are empowered women. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you again. So everyone, thank you so much. Do join us for tomorrow's show again. And uh, Raga, thank you so much. And Namaste. Good night. Subratri. Take care. Thank you, Nupur. You too. Thank you very much. Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update.